Hi there, retirees, old folks, sexagenarians and upwards. It's been a while since our last video epic. Pandemic restrictions have curtailed our output by about 100%. Now we're at the fag end of this most ghastly year. We thought we wouldn't let 2020 end without offering our devoted audiences ideas of what they can do now and in the coming year. We've always wanted to make a video about Australian art and explore where the paintings were created, so we've done just that. We're in the Bathurst Regional Art Gallery, or BRAG for short, which has an intimate connection to the district, where art luminaries such as Russell Drysdale, Donald Friend, Margaret Ollie, Brett Whiteley and John Olson, whose pictures you see behind me, hone their skills. I'm going to have a word with Sarah Gurich, BRAG's director, a little later. But now, through a little Doctor Who magic, we're going to Zafala, where Drysdale and Friend kicked off their art movement in the region in 1947. <laughs> Technology is amazing, isn't it? This is the very spot where Russell Drysdale set up his easel to create the now famous painting. We're going to take a look at places in the Wiradjuri country, more specifically Hill End and Zafala, west of Sydney, which inspired these artists. If art is not your cup of tea, and it bloody well should be, then Rob has uncovered a wealth of historical nuggets which will enrich your experience of these settlements and their surrounds, should you choose to go there. First, a bit of history. This area sprang to fame in the early 1850s when gold was found around Safala. Later, numerous settlements including Hill End attracted attention as more of the precious metal was discovered in the local streams and rivers. As the loose nuggets became fewer, the focus switched to gold-bearing reefs or seams. The zenith of Hill End's popularity was in 1872 when the massive Holterman nugget was gouged from the rock. It weighed an incredible 286 kilos of gold and quartz. You can imagine the celebrations of the town's 27, no less, pubs that night. Hill End today is anything but frenetic. Its hundred or so permanent residents delight in its remoteness and enjoy the solitude away from the stress of city life. This is a place in which uh, people have moved after us here uh, not long ago. And they say to us, you know, it's so quiet, it's so quiet here. Yeah, I said, there's no semi-trailers, there's no highways nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's very quiet. This is a magic place, um, right, yeah. if the weather's right, yeah. and even when the weather's not, it's still got its own uniqueness. This tranquility brought Donald Friend and Russell Drysdale to Hill End in 1947. The idea of decamping to Safala came after reading an article, The Mailman's Time Machine, by George Fowle, in the Sydney Morning Herald. So began the first wave of artists to call Safala and Hill End home. These included Friend, Drysdale, Margaret Ollie, and Jean Bellet, among others. Later, notables such as Brett Whiteley and John Olson made Hill End their base. And more recently, with the help of the Bathurst Regional Art Gallery program, Artists in Residence, a third wave of creative people have come to enjoy this region. What was it about Hill End and Safala that attracted so many artists back then in the 40s? What was it about the place? Well, I think what originally attracted Drysdale and Friend was well, they were getting out of Sydney, yep. the opportunity to get away, mm -hmm. um, to come upon this incredible relic, really, mm -hmm. of the past. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Hill End then was, uh, you know, the, the landscape was rugged and um, it had just been, it still looked like it had been mined, so right. it was raw earth okay. and yeah. um, tailings and all mm -hmm. kinds of... Yeah. You know, much Ev evidence, of, evidence of what had happened yeah. there in the 1870s, um, but also this incredible architecture mm, that mm. you can still see in Hill End today mm, mm. Uh, that was literally just left. You know, people went, it was a boom and bust place, so yeah, yeah, that's right. there were yeah, these yeah. incredible yeah. vestiges of what had been there before, right. and I think that really appealed to the both of them. Most of the major Australian artists came here to paint or to live. Uh, like you know, Drysdale and, and Donald Friend, and then there was another wave with John Olson and uh, Brett Wiley and uh, John First Smith and so on. Yes. And now this is like the third wave. There's, um, I believe, there's about 12 artists that live here. 
Would you be part of the second wave? Or you would be the, Not a second no. one, I'm too yeah. young. You're too young, okay. Yeah, too young. <laughs> okay. Me and my wife have been here 22 years mm -hmm. now. A substantial amount of time, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, that you, you can make a life and you can go, come and go, you know. And uh, it's far, but not that far from the major centers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, cultural centers. We got a very good... Uh, support from the Batus uh, Regional Gallery. The Hill and Artists in Residence program, mm. which operates from what was Jean Bullett and Paul Hayfliger's cottage, Hayfliger's, yeah. and also Murray's cottage, which was mm. once home mm. to Donald Friend. Yeah. So we have two studio cottages there, mm. and that program has the first pilot started in 1995 okay. with Gavin yeah. Wilson, right. um, and it's been going ever since then. So yeah. Yeah. there's been a continuous, um, continue, continual, continual. Uh, group of artists, generations of artists going to this one place, which is rare in Australia. As you were saying, um, you're a finger painter, and how long have you been in, in Hillend? Four generations. You've been here four generations. <laughs> okay. My great-grandfather was one of, the, two of my great-grandfathers was the troopers here. The, the oh, okay. But I've been here all my life. And uh, here is photographs of Marianne's finger, Marianne's finger painting. At sunrise over Durimana, about five o'clock in the morning, the sun's right? coming up with right? the fog in the valley. And God. what drew you to Hillend in in the first place? Drew to being off of work. Um, well, rural, nice setting, all that. Um, yeah. Well, the peace and quiet is wonderful. I could not live in the city. No. And um, have cars at my doorstep. No, yeah, right, right. So, no. Even sitting here, there are cars too close to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorites. Glenn Woodley, Hill End Nude. All right. Now, one of the questions that people ask is, uh, why Hill End? Whatever you do here, I mean, you can really, uh, uh, you know, you can really uh, stretch the time, you know, and the time goes by quite slow here. Mm. And there's no no clocks, no watches. There's no buses to catch. No distractions. Is there a a, a, th a lively artist community now? I mean, do you, are you in touch with other artists yeah, here? Yeah, in touch with all of them. We're yeah. friends, and we get together sometimes. Mm. It has been very pleasurable uh, to work with these people, yeah. interact with these people. Yeah. Uh, the various people are very different. You know, the way they are, their personalities and the way they work and what who, what they wanted to work on you know yeah right so right. Um, so it's all very interesting if this side of hill end doesn't interest you there's a wealth of sociological architectural and mining history to be explored down the road at safara when we arrived around midday we met yeah. a few locals enjoying a pint at the pub they gave us a brief insight into life in the old mining town and you, you've, you've been living here all, all, your, all your life, no, mostly? No, no, I've only been here for all 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, 30 oh, you're years. a recent blow-in. Yeah. <laughs> 30 yeah. years. Okay, and uh, what, so what attracted you to the area? Well, I broke down here on my motorbike and never left, really. <laughs> right? Pretty much, <laughs> to be honest with you. Excellent. How long have you been in the district? Oh, how long have been? How old am I? For your, in, your been, entire life? No, I've been around, mate. Yeah, I've been around. I've just roused about, bumming around. I've been done all sorts of things, but um, I just come here to feel good. Okay, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. It's a little place <laughs> in Australia <laughs> where you can um, live life like your grandmother. Yeah. Everyone's beautiful here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. How long have you been here? Like Five good. minutes. <laughs> and what do you think? <laughs> oh, it's great. So far. So far. <laughs> you've been here for five minutes. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it's a great vibe, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. a great vibe. Yeah, what, 20, 30,000? Miners are in this place at one time. You look at the place today and you're lucky to find 80 people. The gold rust only lasted a couple of years here, then they moved to Hill End, yeah. and when they were moving there, they found gold at Ballarat. Yeah. So, and you always hear about the gold in Ballarat, this, yes. that, and the other, but That's they right. forget about Safala being the, the oldest place right. okay. and where okay. it is. Well, what's the attraction of the place? Oh, well, it's just a bit of madness. A bit of madness? <laughs> I like that. I like, I like mad madness, is good. Do you, do you do any painting yourself? Yes, I've got <laughs> paintings in the room just there if you want to have a look. Yeah, up. sure, I'd love to have a look. While the lively residents of these towns have stories to tell, 
Those who have died here are no less engaging. Visits to the graveyard, both Catholic and the rest, give an interesting insight. Many of those buried here are either young men who died through misadventure on the diggings or infants, many just a few years old. You need to be tough to survive out here. Well, here at the, the Catholic cemetery for the district, it's not surprising that we find a gravestone, a child aged one year and ten months died in 1866. Hillend and Safala are great towns where you can explore the mining history as well as the art history. Take this old machine for example. So this huge contraption is a stamper. All right, I'll explain in a minute. We start here with a big wheel. This would have been turned by a massive belt attached to a steam engine or something to turn this main shaft. Along the main shaft, you've got these hook things. And as they turn, they lift up these stampers and then let them go. The stamper crushes down onto the rock, hopefully um, revealing bits of gold that are embedded in the, in the rock. Fascinating stuff, but let's get back to the art trail you can explore. Okay, in terms of retirees and grey nomads, do, do they go to Safala and Hillend and link it back to Bathurst Gallery? Do they sort of make, make the connections? They do make the connections. Mm. People do understand, and a lot of people know that we run residency programs out there. Yeah, they good. definitely know yeah. that it's it's yeah. an artist's colony. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes good. people might expect yeah. to see artists in yeah. their natural habitat right. in the wild, um, which is yeah. not always the case, but definitely yeah, yeah. people know that this yeah, yeah. is a mecca for Australian Good. Art. Fantastic. Vincent van Gogh once said, I'm not an adventurer by choice, but by fate. Indeed, it was fate that drove Friend and Drysdale to towns established by fatalistic adventurers looking for their fortunes. Their pioneering art trail has seen hundreds follow. The Hillen Safala region is a notable creative hub worth the time to explore, to absorb the inspiration of these paintings or to just fossig amongst the gold diggings. Whatever your interest, this part of Australia is definitely worth a visit.